the, every part of it is useful. So from its leaves to its trunk, its fruits, down to its uh, down to its roots, they are all useful. And at the same time, there is almost uh, no waste left behind for it. It is also used as a raw material or a raw ingredient in uh, different industries such as cosmetics, food processing, and other industries as well. Despite the benefits that uh, the people could enjoy with coconut, there are some challenges and hurdles behind its production. So smallholder farmers or small farmers from rural areas earn from little to zero of what they have worked hard from months to even years. And so here in Hidden Mana Farms, we are enabling our farmer partners to get access to seamless support, training, and education, one way to get out of poverty, hopefully. And uh, as one of the most in-demand fruits in the world or worldwide, it is anticipated to reach $31 billion by uh, 2026 with an annual growth rate of 13.6%. Small farmers are frequently caught in the multi-layered uh, middleman system at the same time the dependence on one product and the poor plant management which results to income loss. And so it is our mission to provide a fair contract farming to these smallholder farmers, what we call our farmer partners, and at the same time to conduct training and education when it comes to the diversifying the products and also at the same time exposure to technology. And uh, despite being an idea, uh, we have come up with a technology that we could offer exclusively for the farmers. And this is what we call the Lubi app. Lubi is the word or the vernacular word for coconut in Warai or in the Visayan form. So Lubi app is basically a coconut, a coconut health checker application that can be used easily by the farmers, even without the use of Wi-Fi. This will help them in the, the management and the plant propagation of their coconut plants. Through the use of research and assessment model, we visualize a farm to market operation, thereby skipping the multi layered middleman process. And after the agreement, for example, between the smallholder farmer and HMF or Hidden Mana Farms, the post harvest process where in, uh, that includes cold storage, sorting, and all are all handled by HMF until it reaches the consumers. We started conceptualizing way back in 2017 and uh, started our temporary website in 2019. And just last year, we went and uh, made a site inspection of the potential project that we will be doing in the future or in the next two years, hopefully. Analysis of global coconut market allowed us to see an exp uh, exponential growth in the next four to five years due to its increasing demand. The team is consists of myself and Lian Gordon, our CFO, and uh, at the same time, both of us are business leaders in our own community with over eight years of experience in different industries. Here at Hidden Mana Farms, we strongly believe in the importance of agriculture and what it brings to the worldwide economies. That's all. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Po. So uh, Q&A, Po. Judges. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Uh, yung, app, yung app mo is already working na? That's already operating or just a prototype pa lang? Prototype. It's only a pro prototype. But we're mm. currently doing a beta program for that one. Yeah. And, 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 you said, and you said that uh, you can check the quality of the coconut. How do you do that? Ah, so I will just get back quickly uh, yeah. to the application so that you can see. So this particular application functions in such a way that the smallholder farmer will just take a picture of the problem, as you can see in this screen in here. So they, they take a picture of the problem of the coconut plant, and then based from the database that uh, it has uh, in uh, within the application or the phone, it will uh, gather all the necessary information gathered in that database and it will match up to the existing problem. And at the same time, it will offer some ways on how to manage the plant. 
So through that, without the intervention of like connecting, for example, with an agent or directly to us, somehow they will have an idea on how to take care of it. Mm -hmm. So, so yung database you still have to create it, diba? No, yung database, no, in order yeah, for you to identify, no. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, because since, like as you can see in here, it's not um, Wi-Fi enabled because these places are in rural areas, meaning to say they're located in mountainous areas or even in places where in transportation is or and communication is not really accessible. So that's why as much as possible, we want to like make an update every month, let's say, for example, uh, based on the information that they will be sending through uh, that phone or through that application how will you charge how, how, how are you going to charge for the fee what's what? the, how are you going to charge yeah how much uh, regarding uh-huh uh regarding this one this is free for the farmers this is exclusive for the farmers and if you can remember like what i said earlier it's gonna be under the the contract so this is like a fair trade contract between the company and the smallholder farmers and this is one of the things that they can enjoy one of the perks in return in return uh providing us their all their fruits all their resources selling it to us Any questions from the judges? Hello. Hi. Hi, Apple. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, everyone. Thank you for sharing your, your presentation. I, I think it's a noble uh, purpose to be in the agri-tech uh, industry. I just want to build on what uh, Henry uh, was asking. Can we go back to your business model? Okay. So can you explain further your business model? Oh, yeah. So the business model for Hidden Mana Farms is that first or primarily we do the research and assessment. So through the research and assessment, we do the things such as uh, checking the background of the farmer, the smallholder farmers. And by the way, uh, before... Um, inviting the farmer over to have or to take the, the agreement or the contract uh, as much as possible it should be a small farmer small holder so when we say small holder farmer uh, their their uh, land size is two hectares pababa or down yeah. so in that case that's the focus of our business so getting all the resources from them so upon checking interview assessment orientation and eventually contract then the training uh, undergo or the, the training comes in and at the same time let's say for example they're all qualified in this part uh, during the research and assessment uh, part so they will be um, considered smallholder partner farmers and at the same time uh, when they deliver to us their their pro produce for example the coconut uh, mature or even the young coconut for example uh, we are the ones responsible in the post harvest the quality control the cold storage because actually coconut in itself should be uh, put in a cold storage in order to be shipped uh, abroad and at the same time even the logistics it's on us so all they need is just supply to us the fruits and we pay them directly so uh, through this kind of model the the risk and the danger of multi-layered uh, middleman is eventually cut off so it's shortened the process is shortened okay so uh, we only have one minute hannah let me just i don't know uh, wrap this up so do you consider yourself a tech company or a traditional company because as well i'm, I'm checking on in on your presentation i'm sensing that you will be monetizing it through selling to consumers Right? Yes. So you don't have so, any any business model that would monetize the tech part, the tech portion of your business. Yeah, the tech portion is not monetized since it's just exclusively for the the farmers and within the contract. So that's why uh, through the contract, uh, the trade contract. So that's one of the perks for them. But for the monetization part, so that will be on the the local and inter the marketing. Uh, already the selling the direct selling already coming from us to the consumers okay so maybe we could just do a, a, a 
uh, follow up questions after if we still have time later on. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, po. Uh, next po is um, energetics. Uh, yes, uh, or use energetics. Yes, by Carby uh, Air Aaron. Yes, po. Uh, let me share my slide. Okay. Um, Timer starts now. Okay, thank you. Um, first, uh, good evening, and uh, it's an honor to uh, present this, what we have made for the past few months. So I'm Carvey. Um, did you know uh, last July 29 is actually Earth Overshoot Day? And what happened is humanity has already consumed our budget for the whole of 2021. And actually, as humans, we are consuming 1.6 Earths. So it's not anymore about climate change. But are we ethical enough that we are enriching the planet instead of just consuming it? And we are already using the budget for next year. So Orgus is a solar energy harvesting window made from waste rocks. So it's an invention that we have made and thankfully won last year's uh, James Dyson Awards. And ultimately, the goal is not to let it just be an invention, but eventually to bring it to the people as a real solution. Thus, we made Orgus Energetics. Orgus Energetics develops unconventional solar energy harvesting devices, uh, solar windows, solar tiles, wall claddings. So essentially, if solar panels go horizontal, we go vertical. Now, um, oh, sorry. Um, the aim of Orius Energetics is to help businesses with strong sustainability initiatives, but has no means of activation. Companies, uh, sorry. Companies who envision to integrate solar tech in their product but limited by current technologies and people with the desire to incorporate clean energy in their lives but hurdled by today's PV limitations. So essentially, Orius harvests UV light, that component of sunlight. And what it allows us is to harvest sunlight in three-dimensional um, sense. So it's not just from direct sunlight but even from those that are reflecting of pavements, walls, and buildings. And the market that we are targeting is globally uh, a 223 billion US dollar market, global market on solar energy. 73 billion is in the Asia Pacific and 118 million is the PV tech on the Southeast Asia. And as we know, solar energy is really growing. It doubled for three years and tripled within just four. So what differentiates us from traditional solar is we work even in low light conditions. Thus, uh, areas where it is a bit cloudy or areas that has snow, uh, we can actually use solar tech in those. And also our technology is versatile enough since we are using biopolymers. It can be shaped into different form factors allowing us to be integrated into vehicles or into clothes. And another thing siguro that's unique is that uh, in, our, in our value chain, by buying the waste crops of farmers, we are empowering them, those who are most vulnerable to climate change, to take part and be in charge of creating a solution. So the applications are not just windows, but also in eco-art and even walls. So they can become solar energy harvesting devices. And beyond that, we can also integrate it in textiles, infrastructure, and eventually even into transportation. Now, currently, past the invention stage, we are at the blueprinting stage. And here we are building on what would be the first generation design, the manufacturing design, and the business design. So technically, this is our early stage jump from being an invention into a real world solution. And uh, Orius operates in our three mission. First is to unlock access to clean electricity for all and to create and help building a waste-free world by creating value from other people's waste. And lastly, by being a social bridge. So in a way, you know, um, we are helping those who are vulnerable to create solutions that can be used by people who has the money, has the capacity to... Um, to buy and to operate this solar and clean technology because currently there's an imbalance 
richest countries, they are the ones who are operating them, while those who are vulnerable are technically those in the third world. So uh, in Orius, we are hoping to bridge that gap. So not just for clean energy, not just in waste, free world, but in building that bridge. Because in climate change and being sustainable, it's a global effort. All right, so uh, judges, questions? Hi, Carvi. Hi, sir. Good evening. Medyo, sorry, medyo sira yata yung PowerPoint. Di ba lang ba't ganun siya ngayon? No, it's, it's, it's fine. No? Na we were able to, to see your presentation properly. Okay, thank you, thank you. How do you pronounce this? Aureus? Aureus, sir. Aureus. Okay. Yes, sir. Aurora. Ano? Yes, sir. Aurora Renewable Energy and UV Sequestration, sir. Pero okay. Aureus na lang. <laughs> Aureus. Okay. So, is your cost to, to manufacture or produce? I know you're still in the blueprint stage, but yes, uh, with your projection, is it cheaper than the traditional given you are banking on using upcycled uh, materials from, from farmers? Uh, actually, sir, uh, yan yung isa sa ano namin, um, key metric uh, by, uh, to really assess if we are prepared. So one of the goal is to create products that would just be at most 25% above the cost of traditional PV. Uh, we're talking about real cost of owning kasi usually they just say PV and that's the cost. Pero actually yung real estate na binabayaran mo, uh, yeah. yun, yun, actually real estate eh, kasi our technology is compatible with existing uh, yung mga inverters, batteries, it's compatible. So the main difference is yung uh, real estate, where we install it. Do we have the land to install it? Do we have the sufficient weather on such space? So yun yung isa sa ina-unlock namin. And currently, the target is 25%. Uh, percent. So currently, we are now at 10% actually for a power that is capable of producing 80% 80, 80 more than traditional TV for the same space. So, ano yun? Uh, medyo ano siya? Uh, it can be frowned upon by scientists kasi parang paano nangyari yun? Ang threshold natin is around 14. Pero actually, what we do is we bend the light waves so we create a more dense pack of solar panels. So, in that manner, uh, for the same space, we're actually producing 1.8 times than what would be produced by just a normal PV for just 110 or just 10% higher of the conventional cost. So would you say at this point you, you are done with the testing stage? Uh, um, for me, kasi, sir, sigo, as an uh, engineering side, sir, uh, tiles and um, yung modules, uh, okay na eh, gumagana na. Pero for me, kasi, to be successful, kailangan ma-install ko siya in a commercial scale, on a large scale, right. in a facility. And thankfully, we have pilot, part, uh, sorry, pilot partners who are uh, helping us and to create that into a reality. So around September or October, yun yung mag uh, full scale installation kami. Kasi it works on tiles on at most three modules. Pero uh, we still have to assure na on a building scale with sensitive equipment, it would still function. Theoretically, it can, pero iba pa din kapag in actual na. So we are looking forward for that testing. Okay, so, so your pilot, your your pilot for the building is within the Philippines. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, but they are okay. a global company, so right. gusto nila talaga sa ibang bansa pero pandemic, so yung Philippines na mga facility mo na nila. So right now the 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 market that you are trying to capture is business facing. Wala wala pa kayo on the retail. That's the. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, una is uh, B two B mo na, then eventually um uh, currently kasi B two B. Uh, then my partner installers come in. So the business who wants to adapt our technology talks to us. Then we have installers. Uh, eventually, as we have proved the technology, get the certifications and all, we want to transition as uh, business to business. In a way, we are now supplying installers. Okay, interesting. Sige. Yes, sir. Um, last na lang, nakapatent na ba? Uh, pending, sir. So we have around, uh, yung last count is we have nine possible patents that we can use. Uh, both for hindi lang yung sa product but also on the process and the testing because we uh, yun yung isa sa advice ni yung isa sa uh, nagme-mentor sa amin from Dyson 
if possible to corner not just the product but the process and the testing as well. So yeah, pan, uh, pen, ano, uh, pinafile na in the Philippines then eventually, hopefully with what we can reach here, uh, we can fund yung ano naman, patent in a global scale. Medyo mahal kasi. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's for me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any questions po from the judges? Last question. Hello. Hi, sir. Yeah. Mga ganyan, mga magkano yung aabutin, yung investment target dyan for this kind of uh, business? Uh, for the business, sir? Uh, mm-hmm. As in, as an investor? Yeah, or yes, yes. Yeah, let's say for, yeah, for as an investor, let's say you're, because mm-hmm. this one is just a concept, di ba? Yes, sir. So if you're, let's say, going to uh, operate na, let's say, no? And uh, you're, start, you're going to start offering your services. Magkano yung abuti mo dyan, yung investments? Okay. Um, currently, sir, uh, hindi ko ma-chop-chop ng mabilisan. Pero uh, estimate is uh, we are actually raising a pre-seed round of around 600,000 US dollars. And that would be enough to make us run for about one and a half years, including na yung R&D. So around, I think, 60 to 65% would be on R&D. Kasi yung windows and yung walls, technically for ano sila, yung first iteration products. Pero we really envision more products beyond uh, that. And especially other technologies as well. Parang yung uh, ngayon, uh, bumabasa lang kami sa off-the-shelf ng mga silicon materials. Pero we are also working on yung solar fibers naman. And something that we call also produce in-house. Para ultimately, uh, two years from now, all the items, materials are built in-house. And, de- and definitely, it would bring the cost down there. All right, thank you. Uh, next speech na po tayo. It's Mr. P. Garaj. Is it here po? Mr. P. Garaj. By Etli Pakipak. All right, so. Uh, they was, uh, hindi po sila naka-attend. So, moving forward po tayo. Ray Invel Brixton. All right. So, uh, please prepare your slides na po. Um, hindi ko po ma-share yung slides. Ah, all right. Ayan po, sir. Try nyo po ulit. All right. Rainville, you can share your slides now. Um, I'm going to do All right, your timer starts now. All right, sorry for that delay. Uh, To start, uh, I think I will be quite different from the other participants because I'm from the idea stage. So my idea is named Brian Vale, and at present I am the only person in my team. And one reason is because I am very selective in finding partners or my co-founders. Uh, some people are either 
um, I'm hesitant to put my trust into them since um, I'm someone who relies on the skills of the people that I will uh, try to invite to join my side. So currently, the people that I need as soon as possible are the partners or co-founders, a business coach or mentor, and a legal consultant. So my background is I'm actually not coming from a business related field. I'm a graduate of medical technology. So I really need these people to join me. So the idea came from the rise of the side hustle word or term during the pandemic time. And then I noticed that some people are starting their own businesses or their own side hostels to make a living out of the pandemic. And this is the vision for the future. Rian Bale is actually composed of three pillars. One is a commercial business platform, a tech service provider, and a nonprofit foundation. So where to start to downscale this vision for the future? Virian Vale will start as a commercial platform with a tech service, and then the businesses will just be partners and the foundation will start as partner organizations. So to explain the commercial platform, it will target the small business owners in the locality, the solopreneurs, and then also the aspiring entrepreneurs. And then we can provide services and a platform that will help them build their businesses in the hopes of boosting the entrepreneurial spirit in the Filipino community. So to explain the tech service, uh, basically this is full of many technicalities, but to an, just an overview, there, the, a portion of the profit from each sale from the businesses will be donated to partner organizations. And then a database will be used to keep track of all the donation proceeds from each transaction. And then to provide transparency, there will be the ability to track and display the status of the donation in real time. As you, as you can see, these two components can stand as their own business, separate businesses on their own. So going back to the, to the vision for the future, that's why there, there, there are these three pillars. These three pillars can someday be separate from reinveil and become an, a separate business of their own. And that's also why when I stated that I need these people in my team, it's because there's only so much that I can do alone, as, especially as someone not coming from the business field. And I need people who, whose expertise are really in these fields. So that's also a reason why I am very selective in finding the people that I need. That's all, thank you. All right, uh, questions pop from the judges. Brickson, good evening. Hello, good evening. I understand you're from the medical profession, right? From the medical field. Yes, sir. Uh, recent graduate now. Recent graduate. So yes, sir. It's, it's safe to assume that uh, we do not have any background yet in handling a business. Yeah, this is actually the first time. And actually, I'm surprised when I received the email, when I saw the email this morning that I will be participating in the pitch tonight. And well, that's good. That's good opportunity, no? That's good news for yeah. you. Congratulations. Now, yung, yung business mo, the, the idea that you have right now, so you're going to provide um, mentorship sa mga gusto mag-business? Uh, can you explain how, how the... Is it an app? Uh, basically, it's the... Um, majority of it is the service. For example, the marketing. Uh, we will provide marketing services. Lalo na po na related sila dun sa donation to charitable organizations parang for example by advocating certain causes you are also promoting the that cause at the same time promoting your own business like providing your business some publicity so so basically if let's say I'm, i have a business uh, an existing business if i get in that how do you pronounce your company uh reinville 
Reinvail. Okay, if if I get in touch with Reinvail, what can Reinvail uh, help me with? What kind uh, of services? Since we're targeting the startups like the solopreneurs, the small businesses, so most of these people are starting aside the hustles, which do not have a background in business like myself, and I want to help them to build their business properly or to keep them on track and build their entrepreneurial entrepreneurial mindset. Okay. So it, it, uh, the platform it will not only provide the marketing uh, services or the marketing mentorship, if that's what you're going to call it, uh, to these yeah. solopreneurs, no? but you're going to help also in the business planning, in the financing, end-to-end? Um, yes. Is um, that the goal? Since, since we will providing a platform, we will get all these people who are starting their own business. Why not, instead of being separate businesses, why not create a common place for them to work together as one and work as one business? Okay, it's, it's, like, a, it's like a hub. No? It's like an innovation yes. hub. Na another. Okay, so if, if, if you're trying to say right now, uh, you're starting this, Wala pang background on the business. So how are you planning to get people on board to help you out with this business? Um, actually, that's the main agenda for now. I need to find some partners who will stand by me and also mentors and a legal consultant since we might be handling some sensitive issues in the legal aspect. Wala pa tong ano no wala pang MVP to. Ah wala pa. Wala pa. So, okay, nasa ano ka pa rin? Nasa idea stage pa rin no. So wala pang hindi pa na validate to, wala pa. Ah wala pa. Early stage. Okay. Last na lang. Um how are you planning to earn from this? What's your business model? Um it's for I first thought of a subscription model but it will be better if I can solidify the agreement through a contract. Like, for example, for they will pay me for a six month six month worth of services, and also through commission from their sales. Okay. 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 That's that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions po from the judges? Hello. 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 In rain rain. Uh, hello. 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 Yes. Um, anong service yung pino provide mo? Yung tax service mo? Anong classing service? And, uh, and uh, basically, it's uh, basically it's uh. It's a donation, uh, donation tracking, tracking. Donation tracker. Donation for what? Uh, uh, I mean, your client will be the foundation, maganon. That will be your client, and then you're going to provide your technology, kano ba? Uh, uh, the the main people who will who will use the use donation the, tracker will be the businesses. Will be the businesses. Since they will provide transparency to their customers of where where the donations are going to in real time. Why why did you make this as a business? I mean, um, uh, how did you come up with this idea? Then why why donation? Uh, because uh, there. Obviously, there are these many causes that that require funding, like like the promotion of sustainable development development goals right now. And I think it's it's good to help the public contribute to the funding of these causes by not only providing active donations directly, but also by passively donating through. To the donation from each of their purchase. 
Okay po. Uh, moving na po tayo sa next startup. Thank you, Reinvail. Thank you. The next po is Tree Garden, Maria Stephanie. Is Tree Garden here? Wala. So move on po tayo sa Step and uh, Step Up Man Power Corp by Jocelyn Montino. Step Up Man Power Corp. All right. So wala rin. So kay ano na po tayo? Mayani by JT Solis. Hey everyone, good evening. Thanks, JC. Uh, it's real nice to see a lot of passionate individuals here. Let me share my screen. Uh, JC, would you allow to share screen? Yes, but try na po, sir. Great, awesome. All right, your timer starts now. All right, cool. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm JT. I'm from Miami, and we're building a sustainable agri supply chain in the Philippines through technology. In the context of the Philippines, agriculture is very fragmented. You have a lot of middlemen, but you don't have a lot of data. This characterization has actually bred three main consequences. One, you actually have a lot of smaller farmers with very limited market access and unfair market access at that, right? This is the reason why a lot of our farmers live below $5.6 per day. But the second thing that we would say is that because you also have a lot of middlemen, this creates a lot of inefficiency and high loss of food between the farmer and the consumer that can actually go as high as twice of the global average. So in the Philippines, that can go as high as about 50%. And the last thing that we would say is that on the part of consumers, you have very volatile prices and a very unreliable supply chain, something that we cannot afford, especially now given the lockdown. What we did in Miami is we wanted to envision a fully unlocking of the 18 billion Philippine agri supply chain. What we did was to actually consolidate a lot of these farmers and optimize and digitize the entire agri supply chain. Our business model at its core is this. We built an agri e-commerce platform that directly sources fresh produce and agriculture products from a lot of our smaller farmers and distributes them to customers, both retail and commercial, the likes of Shell, the likes of Robinsons, the likes of Walter Mart, all those big accounts. We're also very proud to share that in the past less than 24 months, we've already had an impact reach that, is, that can go as far as the North in Batanes, all the way down to our tribal farmers in Palawan. These are some of the cooperatives and the organized smolder farmers associations we've been working with. Something that has also cemented our position in this space is when we rose above 31 countries and actually got the backing of the Asian Development Bank. ADB during the height of the lockdown was looking for a solution, a digital platform that can shape the new normal rather than just adapt to it. So that's when we got their back in when they saw that we were addressing a hard hit economic sector. All of these things have contributed to us being ahead of the curve in the Philippine agri supply chain. At this point, we're proud to share that we already work with a 23,000 strong network of smaller farmers. We have over 10,000 BTC customers and we already power some of the biggest agri supply chains in the country, the likes of Robinsons, the likes of Shell. Walter Mart, even restaurants like UCC Group and the Global Foundation Rotaract. We're also the sole ag e-commerce partner of Grab and the Department of Trade and Industry that has created and drove impact in the lives of smaller farmers across three regions in the Philippines. Something that we're also very proud to share when it comes to the kind of impact and dent we're making in the agriculture space is that we've already driven a 50% attributable rice in farmers' income a huge percentage of our farmers are actually women, 
about 38%. And we've already contributed about a 20% post-harvest loss reduction between the farmer and the consumer. To better humanize the story, I'm showing you a couple of pictures of these farmers across the country. And overall, from a macro perspective, we think that e-commerce is fast growing and is bound to explode. In fact, in a recent report by Google Tamasek, Bain and Company, we're actually foreseeing the next five years, four to five years, we're going to be seeing a 55% year-on-year growth in e-commerce and about 44% year-on-year growth in food delivery. Because of our massive traction and leadership in the space, we've already garnered the support of big multinational brands, the likes of HSBC, the likes of GrabPay, the likes of Kairamiya and Kumu, even huge international brands, the likes of Colgate, Shell, even Universal Rubino of the Gokong Wei Group. But something that has really made our platform solution very relevant in this post-pandemic world is that when we became the ag e-commerce partner of the Philippine Department of Trade, with our, with our task of actually providing continuity in the agri supply chain amidst the lockdown. This is something that we've done with the likes of Region 2, which is your, your Cagayan Valley region with 4,761 farmers and a lot of the farmers, upland farmers that we have in the Cordillera. All of these milestones and achievements would have been made possible if not been for a team that with over 100 years of experience in e-commerce, trading, and agriculture. My co-founder is even a farmer with over three decades of experience in farming. We're also strategically guided by a global board of advisors, even including the former secretary himself, agriculture, Cito Lorenzo. At this point, we're also racing and completing um, our seed up. round with these investors. Thank you. Questions from the judges? Hello. Hello, JT. Hi, Henry. Hi, Henry. <laughs> yeah. JT, you said that uh, you already raised the funding for this. This is already operating, this, this uh, your startup? That's right. That's right. Yeah. We've been operating, been operating for, uh, for less than 24 uh, less months. Than 24 months. Mm -hmm. um, um, and these are our kind of like coalition of investors and backers. So we're, we're the first uh, investment of ag funder in the Philippines, the Silicon Valley Venture Fund, focus in ag tech. How how many how much um, I mean all of these are your are your investors now all of this ADB Buku Ventures, all of these are your investors. Correct, correct. So correct, for ADB, correct. Uh, well, they don't need the equity, well, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, what they yeah, provided us is actually a uh, seed yeah. grant. Um, yeah. In terms of those in who actually took equity, equity, equity. It's ag mm -hmm. funder, ventures, impact and angel investors coming from the Menes family and GMA, and impact investor from World Bank IFC. And your your service is already generating revenues. That's right. Is it? That's right. Mm, how, how much? Uh, how much are you generating now, let's say, after 24 months? We've already generated We've already so generated far, Henry, generated. almost, almost $550,000 GMV, GMV, gross revenue. Gross revenue. Nice, huh? <laughs> right. So, right. So, a lot of, uh, a lot of maybe uh, to give you a give bigger you context to it, uh, uh, Henry, uh, about 70% uh, of that revenue actually that comes, revenue from actually comes from commercial accounts. accounts. So, so, as you may know, as right, you know, right uh, there's been panic uh, buying right now right across supermarkets, especially last weekend. last weekend. So, a lot so of these supermarkets, these supermarkets uh, like some uh, Shell, Shopwise, Shopwise Robinson, Walter Mart, we power their fresh food supply chain. Okay, thank you, JT. Thanks, Henry. Any other questions for, from the judges? Wait, I'm on mute. Ayan. Hi, JD. Good evening. Hi, Jesse. Good evening. Good evening. So, yung, yung customers here right now are mostly mga supermarkets. So, like a bulk, a majority of your revenue is coming from, from these supermarkets, right? That's right. So how are they paying you? Is it in cash, in terms, <laughs> in kind of Interesting, Jesse. You know, regardless of uh, whether it's a technology agri-supply chain platform that they're dealing with, uh, their payment terms don't even change. <laughs> so, you know, the likes of... Uh, you have one eighty days term? <laughs> not, not as uh, long as that, uh, Jesse, right? Because these are kind of like fast-moving consumable goods and essentials, right? right? So... 
Walter Mart, you know, about 15 days, about two weeks. Um, Robinson's would be uh, roughly about uh, 30 days, right? So not really 180. <laughs> That's surprising, you know? It's surprising given given that fast uh, the turnaround time for your aging is only 15 days. That's right. Days for aging. That's quite fast. You know? That's right. Given, That's right. Given, given the uh, the practice, the common practice uh, in these types of industry. May I know your your margin for because I think one of your goal is really to make sure that farmers would get the most out of their products in terms of revenue, in terms of something that they could put really in their pocket. So how much uh, is the margin that you are getting out of these products? That's right. Interesting question, uh, Jesse. Because of the very highly inefficient nature of the Philippine agri-supply chain, that inefficiency actually allows us to have a very sustainable business, right? So when we even filed our audited FS with SEC last year, we have positive EBITDA. So our margin is average about 50%, and yet we're still competitive, right? So we have an average gross profit margin of about 5-0, 50%. Be that as it may, our pricing is very competitive. And this, this is what allows us to actually supply to the likes of Robertson's because they still have to pay to sell it. Right. right, the likes of Walter Mart. So, so um, I'm guessing most of your your expenses are going to the logistics. I would say about uh, half of that would go towards uh, logistics and operating expenses, pick and pack. So our pickers and our packers, um, you know, a little buffer when it comes to the difference between after you pick it up and consolidate from the farms, all the way to how it lands. Right, you'll always have a riseco, what they call it, the riseco. Right. Um, and also, you know, warehouse expenses. Yeah. So you got a warehouse where you put all your. Um, you have, how many warehouses do you have? One. We have a central sorting hub in Green Hills and one. One. Okay. So, yeah, I'll just chat with, with some of my questions, I think. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Jesse. Right. Interesting questions. Um, last uh, na po tayo, last uh, startup who will pitch is uh, My Choice Business Brokerage by Mark Bat Bate. Sir Mark? All right, your uh, timer. Hindi uh, pa yata naka-on yung mic nyo, sir. Okay. Can you all hear right. me? Oh, yan po. Sige. So your timer starts now. Yeah. Well, good morning to all of you. Actually, why it's morning? Because I'm very optimistic and I always look for the brighter future, brighter day. So my business, it's my choice, business brokerage tech. Okay, presentation and highlights. Our goal, we help clients buy and sell businesses with ease. Our objectives, combining the traditional way of doing business brokering with technology. Uh, about me, I'm a licensed real estate broker. I network with business brokers, business owners, realtors, assisting clients, referrals, and the like. Industry outlook. Business brokering is actually a total new industry in the Philippines. As an example, New Zealand, which has a total of 4 million plus population, has 6,000 plus businesses for sale at any given time. Compare it to the 110 million people of the Philippines. So our target market, sellers, because of the internet, businesses shifted. There's already a succession issues. Juniors doesn't want the business of their parents because they want to travel, they want to do other things. And not only succession issues, there are also other issues like retirements, health problem, cashing in, change of lifestyle, conflicts among business partners and others. As a business broker, 
no matter what reason the seller has, we will help them to sell their business with ease. Okay, competition against our approach. How will you set your company from competition? Well, existing business brokering companies now uses independent business brokers. It's inefficient. There's no focus. What I will do, I will use full-time staff. I rely more on artificial intelligence, AI, and technology to deliver fast, efficient, and low-cost services. What's your path to reach your customers? Doing content marketing consistently, coming up with articles about business-related topics, doing interviews of different businesses, strong social media presence, referrals from existing clients and other venues to reach target markets like shows, events, tournaments, and the likes. So our product and services, listing the business, preparing the business, marketing, closing sales, and getting referrals. How do we earn? Marketing fee from the business that will be listed in my platform, success fee from the seller, engagement fee in the event that the buyer uh, we don't have the requirement of the business for that particular buyer, then we will help the buyer to get the particular business that he or she wants. And also we will do such subscription fees. It will be implemented as a subscription fees when we establish track records and enough subscribers. Our future growth, we will sell not only physical businesses, but also online businesses like the shipping, affiliate marketing, website, blogs, patents, also like Facebook business page and, and the likes. So some of my business listing, now I have an um, authentic Japanese food franchise business that caters 100% food delivery. I have an all-in-one app for sale I have sports manufacturing for sale, travel, and all-in-one app for sale as well, laser tag business, asset sale. Asset sale because I have some businesses that closed down due to pandemic. Now, I'm also selling their assets. So, existing channel to, for me to get exposure. I have my own YouTube channel. I have 1,114 subscribers, 100,000 plus views because I have a niche channel. I normally do videos Time's every up. two to three days. Uh, okay. A uh, question spot from uh, to the to the judges. Hi, Mark. Good evening. Hi. Good evening, Jess. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, sorry. You're welcome. Uh, Mark, my quick question, uh, who would be your competitors, your competition for this type of uh, service that you're planning to launch? Actually, well, there's one, uh, there's one company that's doing it. Also, other real estate people, they could do it. But what my, my advantage is I focus on doing it 100%. I'm committed on doing it. That's why I created this slowly uh, created this uh, awareness and also um, like um, mergers and acquisition yeah that, that could be also my my comp competition uh, my advantage is I, if i come up with the technology to do it it will be faster approach and uh, and uh, i could reduce the cost of the service by doing more transactions so, so so right now this is the you do not have yet an mvp for this one i have mini, minimal like like the the listing that i have right now uh actually i also have listings from other brokers that we are selling now like like this one the what i recently got this uh, authentic japanese franchise business so that's actually my I, I think that that's my minimal. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> you're, you're, do you have a, a workable uh, prototype 
for 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 this service well what i'm doing now is just i'm just creating awareness and it's in my channels now but uh wala pa time that's what that's what my plan to put up that 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 uh platform okay so wala pa yung platform wala pa, wala pa yung platform yes yes okay so hindi pa na validate yun yung idea if the idea is 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 working if people wala pa wala pa nakuha na ng feedback wala pang beta wala pa na wala pa wala pa right now okay yes. okay so what could you say na ano will be your economic moat Yeah, uh, given many competitors in this space that you're trying to to be involved with. Well, what, what most of my competitors are not very few are doing really business brokering because it's so challenging. That's why I wanted to to start it. Uh, if I could put technology, and my main thing is like if like my bold part if if New Zealand, which has only a four million plus population has already 6,000 plus businesses. And if you compare it in the Philippines, having 110, just a 1%, you get 11,000 businesses for sale already. You just have to create that awareness. How much is your, how much is the TAM for for this? Uh, I'm sorry, the total addressable market? Uh, actually, it, it, it could go from, we could list from a 500,000 businesses up to 100 million businesses for sale uh, you're talking about the philippine market or is philippine market philippine because market. uh we even listed when i was in my previous company I, we even listed like a one to 2.2 billion businesses for sale okay okay thank you thank you mark for, for answering my thank question. you jesse henry i'm good Hello. 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 Hi Henry. Hi Henry. Yeah, you so you you don't have a platform yet, diba? So what you have yes, is I'm just working a concept, on, on, on that. That's that's why you yes. so, Yeah, so what what you are doing right now is are just using your you, you but you you are already doing brokering, diba? Right now. Yes, 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 yes. Now. That's And why I created in Facebook my organic channel, channel social media social platforms. Media. Wow. Wow. And you and you do that ano lang uh, sa Facebook ngayon. That's what Sorry. you do now. Uh, sa Facebook lang. Oh no, I have Facebook, I have YouTube mm. channel, Instagram, I'm doing blog bloggers, uh, also uh, Pinterest. Okay. Yeah, but uh, this is the the main channel that I have right now. Those, yes. those so, three. So that's where you display all the ano, di ba? All the buyers, yes. all, all, all the companies that you want to broker, no? Yes, diba? and also the, I'm doing mm. every week like Uh, ads in Facebook because it's much mm. reasonable in Facebook. <laughs> Last question, so, po. Yeah, so 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 right now, um, uh, what is your difference? Uh, how do you make your business different from the others? Because other other people are also doing this, eh? like you know, yes, yes, also similar services. Mm. Yes, uh, but definitely that's that's the problem now because they're not focusing and most of their their clients has a uh, bad feedback with them. And my difference is I focus on what I'm doing right now. I concentrate. That's why even tomorrow, I have a uh, ongoing industrial listing tomorrow. Uh, it's it's a laundry, industrial laundry in Pasig. I, 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 I'm doing it. That's my advantage. I'm really committed. All right. Thank you, Po. Thank you, Henry. Thank you. So, uh, thank you very much sa ating mga startups na na-participate po for tonight's uh, uh, competition. Uh, we will having now a, a an ass uh, assessment of the startups. Just hold on po. I don't fight, but
by the ocean It was so dismal Women all standing shark on their faces Sad description I was looking for you Everyone is singing Arms 
wide open Bring me back to life And I feel just like before Hearts are broken
Ah. Thank you for uh, waiting. We do apologize. Na medyo natagalan po. So without further ado po, uh, we will uh, present first the certificate of participation uh, with a, a particular order po. So first, um, We will present this uh, certificate of participation. This is to certify that, uh, that Hidden Mana Farms has participated in the entrepreneurship. Thank you, thank you, Po. Next is My Choice Business. 
Thank you po for your participation. Next is Mayani. Rain Veil. And of course, uh, Aurus Energetics. All right. Uh, for the winner, po, uh, we'll call in Sir Jesse John Bondok, who will um, present the winner or the champion for the e EWC uh, Philippine Cup. Thank you, JC. And thank you, everyone, for participating tonight. You all did great. You're all champions uh, with your ideas, with your businesses, with your ventures right now. And uh, after a couple of time deliberating, uh, who will be sending to EWC World Cup in Riyadh? Uh, we would have decided. But before I announce, let me just first thank everyone. Thank you, Apples, uh, Carvey, Brixon, JT, and Mark for your participation tonight. Thank you so much for your time. And without further ado, I'd like to announce uh, the group, the business startup that we will be joining or representing uh, the Philippine team for EWC World Cup in Riyadh, hopefully this September, is no other than Team Orius. Congratulations, Carvey. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's a close fight, guys, but congratulations. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Hopefully you could uh, really do good in, in uh, networking and hopefully getting the funding that you need for your venture in our EWC World Cup in Riyadh. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Definitely, um, we will still do our best pa, mas ma-develop pa until dun sa mismong competition pa, we can bring more to the table for them. And at the same time, kung ano man yung learnings natin, and definitely we can share it with the other startups here in the Philippines. So, um, kaya natin to. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you, right. thank you. I all think right. that's the, the beauty of what we're doing right now. Now, if we could all collaborate, I think, uh, well, the Philippines is still in the infancy stage in terms of tech, in terms of uh, startup. But with uh, you guys doing this continuously, collaborating, connecting, and sharing what you've learned globally outside what the Philippine market has to offer, I think uh, we, we could really get a good head start with our tech industry here in the Philippines. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you, Po. Thank and you, that uh, wraps up po, the EWC Philippines Cup. So thank you um, to our partic uh, participating startups. Hope to see you on uh, next year. Hopefully, sa ano na po tayo, sa totoong may venue na. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. And have a safe uh, night. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Now rockin' with the legendary oh, yeah, stunt yeah, yeah, yeah. And it ain't over until we say it's done You know what it is Let's go baby You know I came up from nothing It's the sun out, you know I ain't stressing I know you already know it takes So follow my lead